pourquoi il y a une distinction. Do you definitely have some reasons because you already invested like a lot of So you need to update it. I'm sorry. So what is so funny in this class? <laughs> what is important? And what is the connection to your as a process or coming response? Okay. It's puzzle. If, if, if there was no reason to to stay in the class, where you where you stay? So, what is the, is there any class that has connection to uh, to this class? I know that you had, um, there is a logic in taking uh, calculus and differential equations in order to take this class. If this class is prerequisite for anything. It's most material. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, Alex may want to take physical chemistry too, and therefore he takes. Do you organic? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Who's taking the organic? Who are you taking the organic? Okay, now I see there is a reason. <laughs> it's just uh, <clears throat> either keeping secrets or being true. Optional disclosure. So, and uh, what are we doing towards an organic? Not yet. Nothing. What 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 is the uh, subject of uh, of the next chapter? Yes, uh, you can just read the uh, scrolls we memories. Where did you start? Uh, So what is oscillating? What is oscillating in the life of physical chemistry? Examples, what, what kind of oscillating or uh, either in a regular life or in science? Smiling cosine function. I am in presence of highly educated mathematicians. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> what in, in natural sciences? Sound. And doing what else? Sound. Sound, okay. Like compressions and decompressions. Yes. What else? This is really good. Okay. Uh, intensity of electric uh, cube. Okay, gravitational waves of this. Uh, okay. what, what else? Uh, this this all of you be physics, acoustics, electrodynamics. What is oscillating in chemistry? You had a reaction that was close to zero on the delta G scale. It could oscillate back and forth between equilibrium. Reaction. Yes, there are reactions that are sweet, but something much more common in nature. The electron, it, it does some periodic motions. They are not always uh, oscillations, but yeah, not that. But even, I, I cannot say more common, but as common as uh, electron. What are you doing with as chemists? Atoms, molecules. So, what atoms are you? If, if there is no reaction. Huh? Yes. So, uh, um, even with, if electrons are, are stable and do not go anywhere, and, um, if you heat material, 
the atoms start to move. And if there is no reaction or dissociation, they just oscillate around the uh, atomic molecule. Okay? So the main goal for next lectures is to see how atoms are oscillating and later on there will be some consequences for observables that may pop up in the um, instrumental measurements which we are not doing in this course but later on you, you may be exposed to you know, infrared spectroscopy okay um now the super question what do you remember from last lecture doing matter up Huh? You're doing matter operator. Oh, good. <laughs> Who remembers anything about it? Who remembers the name of the letter of the letter? Alex may be excused from reading the letter. Just to answer. Okay. Um, well, you, uh, I see that you remember that somewhere in the notes there is something about weather operators. It's, all, it's already a progress. <clears throat> but what uh, is a standard protocol to explore any new um, model, any new object in our, uh, in our class? Which uh, techniques can um, you remember the navigation slide with different methods and different uh, objects, right? Okay. So, which methods do you remember? And uh, often the methods uh, accumulate on the top of each other. You can go further before you do something a little basic. Which equations do we solve? Okay. Well, which two types of Schrodinger equations do you? And which one is easier? Good. So we do not need to talk about anything more advanced before we solve time-independent Schrodinger equation for a new model, right? So we need to solve time-independent Schrodinger equation for uh, harmonic oscillator, which is which represents interatomic bonds. Uh, the simplest example is uh, H2 molecule, right? Where uh, hydrogens oscillate near each other. And where this equation comes from? What is it? Taylor series, right? Huh? The Taylor series? Uh, for which term Taylor series helped us? What, 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 is, what is shown here and what, what do we see and what, what do we do? Do we need a Taylor series for, for the first time? Did we ever need it? So what what is first term? Kinetic part. Yes, um, yes, it's it's uh, kinetic energy. Yeah. I can't write my finger on here, but hold on. So kinetic energy. Then uh, what is this? Yes, potential energy. And for potential energy, we did uh, practice expansion around the equilibrium, right? So it was uh, position at equilibrium plus first derivative times deviation from equilibrium plus second derivative times deviation from equilibrium squared. And uh, we can do manipulations to get about first terms and have on the end of Our square term is uh, potential energy. Right? If you depart from equilibrium, energy increases. <coughs> so, what is this phi of phi? Uh, do we know it?
or um, do you remember what? Do you remember how to phi of r equals to something? It's a, a simple setup. If you declare that you do not know it, then it is our unknown function, right? which we need to find. We want to know it, but we do not know it. Yet. And uh, energy is, uh, is also unknown, right? So it is should be the equation for this case. So, who can solve this equation? Probably. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's formulate let's who wants to solve this equation. Then, then we can get answer that no one. <laughs> well, we, we have to. Uh, uh, it is a substantial effort that we have to do, but it is not pleasant and not easy. Um, why did we started to talk about weather operator? What is it? Probably you said it was easier than calculating out things before. Yes. So uh, there is a, a standard way to solve this equation through expansion in series, and it is really hard. And uh, weather operator is about 10 times easier, although it is also some, uh, some error. So why this equation is complicated? This is a second order differential equation. Well, we successfully solved the uh, second order differential equation when we had zero potential. There were sign, sign for this case. So this term with non-zero potential and this potential continuously changing is uh, bringing additional change. Without this uh, term, one would just plug in exponential and see what happens to coefficients. But uh, here the answer is neither exponential nor sine nor cosine nor polynomial. So it's how many solutions? Typically, quantum equation has. Any? Yes. So it will be um, more than one answer, one equation. So several functions and several energies. Okay. Can you go downstairs lower than the basement? So that's the main idea. So if we uh, assume that we already have the set of uh, Way functions, first set, zeros, first, second, and energies for them. Then the trick is so it is, uh, it is standard, it is legitimate. I'm, I'm not giving you something insane, uh, but it is uh, second in the list of stuff. I'm skipping most mathematical hard stuff. So, assuming that we know these uh, functions, we can hypothesize. That we we, do, we can design abstract mathematical operator that will correspond to walking the stairs up or down, only one step at a time. So if we are in ground state, we go up by this uh, raising operator to the first step. If you apply this operator once again, we go to the second. If you apply it once again, it's so an opposite. If you have lower operator, we just climb down. And the main idea, main benefit, main immediate benefit of, of this uh, hypothesis, if we will be successful, is that by applying lower an operator to the lowest possible state, we should get what? Zero. Yeah. Right. Uh, is it convincing? Okay. Um, so, if we design in the right way this uh, weather operators, then uh, we will need to solve <coughs> a question like this: this weather operator, which also may include some differential stuff, acting on a non-wave function from a wave function, 
you know, gives you. Um, there are good expectations that this equation will be so much simpler to solve than the Schrodinger equation. But as if we would already know the raising operators, so we first find lower state, and then we apply raising operator and climb up and generate uh, excited states. So it will be easier and it will be more close to natural science. We will not devote like three lectures to pure math. We will do a little bit of math, a little bit of analysis so that we um, understand what we are doing. So how to design these operators? If you are busy or if you need to relax after the uh, relaxation on weekend, you can force it. I will give you a signal. Uh, oh, <laughs> someone literally followed me. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, I will give you a sign uh, when to wake up and when to concentrate substantially. Right now, it will be some auxiliary information. It's useful, but not like top criminal thing. So, I'm not going to give a very rigorous mathematical source for, for, for this uh, weather operators. And we do not have much power, much skills, and much objects in, in this area. Uh, the operations that we can successfully complete are limited by now. So we do know Hamiltonian. It is a plus. We do know uh, that there are some fundamental basic operators like position and momentum. And we do know that Hamiltonian can be expressed in terms of position and momentum. Right? Which is here. So instead of differential operator for momentum, you can just put E squared over to kinetic energy. And this uh, mass frequency squared over to uh, elongation squared as a, as a, 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 a position squared. So Hamiltonian is expressed in terms of position of momentum. So there is a hypothesis which is not supported by anything right now. It's like uh, an idea which is not yet proved or su supported is referred to as hypothesis. So what if we add together, we build a superposition of position and momentum operator, we just add them together and check whether some values of coefficients, like getting in front of position of momentum, will give uh, what we want. So the keeps the keeps is not super important. Um, in about 15 minutes, uh, when I will declare the values of these coefficients, it will be time to, to focus and, and to record. Right now, it is just really focused. Okay, so the um, abbreviations here, P1, P2, is for plus, and M for maybe minus, because plus if you go up, minus if you go down. Make sense? You always need to design some abbreviations. And then there is an a really interesting and important property that comes not from formal mathematical derivations, but just philosophical. Suppose that you already have this operator. It allows you to jump from one eigenstate to another one, up or down. Now, if you have a quantum system that, let's say, sits at state number one, Then you apply a lower operator. And after you apply a raising operator, what will happen to the system? Yeah. One step. Yes. So it, 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 it's really cool. So if you apply a combination of raising and lower operators, you will return back to the state where you started from. And um, there is another hypothetical statement that later on will become very natural, we'll prove it later, then by 
amount of, uh, in uh, harmonic oscillator, the energy, the uh, Newtonian, can be referred to as index of the state multiplied by a constant. So based on this not very rigorous, not very strict, like fluffy uh, ideas, one can formulate a plan <coughs> how to design this uh, weather operators. So if we would multiply resonant lowering by itself, resonant operator times uh, lowering operator, we should give, we should obtain from the and back. We should obtain this uh, R square, P square with uh, right coefficients. So the procedure to find this uh, weather operators would be assume this functional form, opposite proposition, then multiply them one by another and make a match, make a solve, uh, solve this equation for values of coefficients. So on one hand, we will have this product of uh, raising and lowering with unknown coefficient. On another hand, we will have this p squared and then r squared. So if uh, raising and lowering operators are linear and p and r, then maximum power will be square second, right? And we see that there, there is no first power in homogeneity. It's only proportional to either position square or momentum square, which means that uh, there will be some consolations. If you open bracket, the terms that you have uh, products of PR and RP should cancel each other. Okay. You can, those who are not sleeping, can get tired or irritated, but I promise what you're doing is easier. Uh, so, think number three. Um, if we are doing games, if you are playing with good wave functions, they are normalized. If you are playing with good operators, they should be hermitic. So, another piece of um, hypothetical input is that if we do Hermitian conjugation of raising operator, it will convert into lower operator. If we apply Hermitian conjugation to lower operator, it will convert to raising operator. So if we bring in this hypothesis number three, so uh, total three hypotheses were that uh, our raising and lowering are linear in position momentum. Second, that their product will give and third, the their Hermitian. If you stick all this in, uh, one can solve and find the coefficients and, and uh, declare this agreement. So, there are not too many ways to do linear combination. We can put plus here and there and just uh, assume that this coefficient is uh, really good as well. Right? Four unknown coefficients. Um, 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 P1, P2, P1, P2. And by opening these brackets, we should get this uh, equation. Keep speaking, keep speaking. I will wake you up when there will be a solution. So if we are opening the bracket, there will be square terms, there will be cross terms, and note that in cross terms, the order of RP and PR will be different. <coughs> you already know that quantum uh, operators do not commute. If you swap the order, there is a penalty. So um, if we do it, P1 and 1, it should be the same provision as P1 in uh, front of KHM. P square A square over 
And then because of the uh, Hermitian property, it will be just P1 times P1 star and uh, equals to minus A equals to over L, which means to find this uh, P coefficient, we just take square root of this factor in front of uh, uh, this factor A equals square root of if you're looking for the uh, coefficient that you pop up in front of the right point, if the m point is square root of 2, you need to take uh, square root of it. Then, uh, in order to process the cross terms, one needs to d of d. fact that if you swap them, there is a penalty. And uh, if we carefully follow, follow the steps, one would obtain the uh, values for the, okay, wait up, if you were relaxing. So th this is a uh, object that we will practice, that we will use again and again for a uh, couple of weeks for sure, and there will be some homeworks based on, on these options. So it is not uh, a very good thing for a to know. <clears throat> so, raising and lowering equilibriums can be formulated as superposition of uh, position and, and, and momentum with coefficients that are obtained by matching of product. Of, of the ladder operators and Hamiltonian. And um, this is often missed in textbooks. I just uh, gave this little guidelines to have the logical picture and to help all of us to memorize. I, I cannot break that if I wake up in the middle of, of the night, I will remember this picture. The only way is to either look in the cheat sheet or to read the right. But uh, what can we, how can we characterize for, maybe not for immediate memorization, but just get acquainted with these two definitions? So, Hermitian property. Here, in front of R, it is everything is real. Real is always Hermitian. In front of momentum, the coefficient is. Uh, Image, imaginary, with plus and minus or lower and, and raised, which means if we apply Hermitian conjugation, complex conjugation, the sign in front of imaginary unit will flip. Right? So we immediately see that these two operators match the requirement of uh, they are Hermitian conjugates of, of each other. Right? Make sense? What else? <coughs> they both... Oh, interesting that for lowering it is plus, for uh, raising it is minus, which is... Um, so if you see dagger here, it will be minus here. The, both coefficients do have square root. A square root originates from uh, matching between uh, terms in Hamiltonian and, and this special coefficients. In both coefficients, the one constant is in denominator. One over two h bar is in denominator here and there. Both coefficients have, have square root. But in the one in front of position, you have square root of uh, mass and frequency in the denominator, and uh, in the coefficient in front of momentum, you have square root of mass and frequency in the denominator. Why were we doing this? What did we declare before planning to go asleep? 
I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try to remember. So, we are starting oscillations. For oscillator motion, we formulate Schrodinger equation. First time independent Schrodinger equation. And by your and our common mathematical intuition, we recognize that this equation will be not easy to solve. Therefore, we decided to go over the bypass shortcut. So these ladder operators are expected to help us to solve time-independent Schrodinger equation with much less mathematical efforts. Later on, they will bring a lot of another benefits, but the first immediate benefit is uh, speed up in solving time independent Schrodinger equation. So, what did we promise to each other, or you didn't promise anything to me? What did I promise? That be easier. Yes. It's what we are doing is super easy. Trust me. Uh, but more practical. Which steps will be especially easy? What will we do instead of literally solving time uh, independent of the equation? My thing is to. Uh Function that are the place to a function that's at a certain excited state and it would either go up or down excited state. Excellent. But it is too general. Um, there, there is a plan. We will start of deriving wave function for ground state. And then as soon as we have ground state, we will apply raising operator and generate first excited, second excited, and so forth. But first we need to get ground state. Uh, how are we going to get it? Scroll through your numbers. 20 minutes ago. Trying to go down to basement and then uh, going lower than basement. Yes, if we apply lower an operator to lowest possible quantum state, the result will not give us new quantum state. It will be just zero because this operation is not possible. Okay? So we are going to apply this lower operator k to unknown ground state wave function. And uh, philosophically assume that it will be zero. So solving this equation is much slighter. 20, 50 times quicker than solving the actual Schrodinger equation for us today. So you'll just plug in this stuff into this equation and try to solve it. Before we move on, okay. W equals mass, W equals um, angular moment, correct? No, no momentum, no momentum. Angular frequency. Um, so potential energy is K R square over 2 where R is elasticity, right? And this elasticity constant can be replaced by uh, mass times frequency square. But frequency is like how often it oscillates uh, for some depth. Okay. So we do plug in definition of momentum operator, which uh, I have moral right to ask you to remember it because I remember it myself. And probably you, you already do, right? So it's uh, minus i h bar derivative over position. 
And then we are getting an equation uh, that has some coefficient time position, some coefficient times derivative multiplied by a lower function. R times a known function. I plus D I D R equals zero. Well, I'm skipping coefficients, but just checking that uh, this equation doesn't scare you. So there are, no, there are no second order derivatives, and there are no squares of independent uh, variable. So this one should be solvable. Okay, let's scroll. Let's scroll back. Uh, or R phi plus D phi D R equals zero. You can bring derivative to the right side. R phi equals dr. So now we can uh, move the divide both sides by independent variable and multiply both sides by Divide both sides by uh, wave function and multiply both sides by increment of, of variable. So R D R on the left and D phi over phi on the right. Um, would it be with minus? Yeah. No, no chance for extra credit to that. <laughs> Okay, makes sense. And then uh, both, you can put integration sign uh, on, on both sides. What is integral of uh, linear function? Pi squared over two. Yeah, what is integral of uh, one over pi? Negative natural log of pi. Good. And then you just do some manipulations to uh, prepare it more appetizing for so for for five. We go back. Like, where did we get uh, R five plus D five DL? Where did how did we go from that top equation? Huh. Really? Who else uh, supported this question? Thank you so much. Stop me more quicker. Because uh, we, we can think on, on different places. Some, some things that can be evident for you can be very hard for me and I can mumble for half an hour. And some things that uh, I assume natural could be uh, requiring additional comments. So we are multiplying both terms onto a known function. So we are opening brackets. Right? Then we have all this boring constants, R times phi. Oh. Plus boring constants, I is first, and then DDR times phi equals zero. So we have R times phi. And D D R times phi. In the next equation, I just uh, skip the constants. Otherwise, otherwise they distract the attention. But uh, we need to work on constants and, and make sure that they are not forget. Just uh, first, we make sure that uh, the equation is solvable. 
in principle, and then we work out all, all the details. Thanks, Thanks much for pointing to that question. Okay. So, uh, the constants, if they're taken care of, then we just then only go over each part, and the rest is, is easily kept before. And uh, if we integrate both parts, um, the integration of one over another function will be logarithmic, the integration of, of the R will be R squared over 2. And if we plug it in, we uh, may want to put left and right parts into the powers of exponential, right? Why? Because we need to solve for wave function. So we put the answer on the left side of the differential equation in the power of exponential, it, since we want to get by. And same thing for the uh, results of integration on the right side. What is exponential or logarithm? Correct. So we do have, and uh, I messed up the notations, but let's rename this unknown coefficient c into the letter n because it will be normalization constant, which we need to work on later. I'm not sure if you, today we will have time for this, but wave function of ground state developed under assumption that um, weather operators work and that one cannot go lower than ground state gives you a function that you may recognize on money of which country the designer of this function was shown. Germany. Uh -huh. What's the name of the guy? Uh, yeah, Gauss, Gauss, Gaussian function, right? You recognize it. Exponential to minus uh, independent variables. Well. And uh, this another stuff that comes here determines the width. So this um, constant, constant mass. This is not mass of electron right now. We are talking about atoms. It is. Uh, Either mass of an atom or so-called reduced mass, like special equation for average between if you have uh, like uh, hydrochloric <coughs> 35 times different than mass, reduced mass. Frequency of oscillations which can be measured from the plasma. Notice this uh, factor too that originates from integration. So if we are going to large objects is a uh, huge mass, then uh, the width will be super narrow so that we can forget about talking about And if we are speaking this about light, uh, atomic and molecular objects, the width is substantial. So this is one of the manifestations of quantum nature of, of atoms. They, although we know the equivalent distance, they, even at zero temperature, there is a, a little uncertainty where atoms are. There is a chance, there is a probability that they're a little closer than the equilibrium distance and a little further than the equilibrium distance, according to Gaussian distribution. Good. Try, try to make some records by your own words. This is something, it sounds trivial, but it's one of the main take home messages of the course. Change of two minutes. So the next step function looks like Gaussian, similar to ground state of particle in the box, there 
always one peak in the center. But it never goes to zero. It decays uh, very smoothly. So um, longer elongations or contractions um, are possible, but their probability is uh, vanishing. So we are kind of done with uh, this stuff. I want to put heads up for next uh, steps. Because we need to go for that crazy. So next step when we meet again will be to find out the value of normalization coefficient. Although we already know the functional form of uh, ground state, we are not aware, we do not know what is the normalization constant. And uh, uh, sometimes we will need literal thing. So we will need to multiply the function conjugated by itself, integrate, and to make sure that the uh, result is, is equal to 1. This will solve that. <coughs> okay, done for today. Looking forward to see you on Wednesday. Uh, we didn't have enough uh, knowledge about new subjects to do any homework, so we just accumulate strengths. <laughs> Dimitri, over the weekend I saw this article of a team who, was, who got um, something uh, like a, a set of atoms to go below zero Kelvin. No. But they said it was done by freezing the atomic spin because at zero, would that be true? No, uh, it's... Uh, I corrected it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Reading it on the No. There, um, it is not possible to go to negative uh, temperature, but there are some effects, some processes that would look as if temperature is negative. For example, if you have a laser pointer or laser in the lab, the, uh, there is a so called inverse equation when we help them from. Uh, Occupied, highest occupied orbital is transferred to uh, lowest unoccupied. So it is inverse equation. It is uh, it will not uh, exist at a long time. It will relax. It will go back with a meeting of four. Right? Um, there are theorems from PKM2 from statistical mechanics that in equilibrium the occupation of electrons depends on temperature. In uh, at, at zero temperature, uh, it will be just all occupied orbitals are all occupied, all unoccupied are empty. And if you increase temperature, there is a thermal excitation. There is a little less on the occupied and a little more than zero on unoccupied. At infinite temperature, it will be like 50-50, everything will be occupied. But it, 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 there is no positive temperature that will give you uh, more occupation in the originally empty. The, there is no such temperature that would give you inverse occupation as in lasers. But if you mathematically assume that temperature equals negative value, then you will naturally and plug it into distribution, you will get inverse occupation. Therefore, you can tell that laser is a matter of negative temperature, which is not right. If you put in thermometer to the So uh, if it is discussion on this uh, lines, I would agree. But you know, not every article is correct. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, why, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> so I was like, I don't think that's possible. But they said the team was trying to freeze the spins of atomic, or freeze the vibrations of atomic particles that if it was frozen, since they're not vibrating and you have vibration at zero Kelvin, it would technically be negative. Can you send me the link? I'll see if I can find it again. Okay.